One of boating's finest pleasures is lying to your anchor in a place only accessible by boat. The feeling of freedom and self-sufficient isolation is what boating's all about. The principles of dropping the hook are very easy, and just about every sailing course from beginner to yacht master will cover the subject. So why do so many boaters seem to struggle? Because theory and practice are very different. As with most things, planning is important, and having a good look at your charts and tide tables before you set off is of paramount importance. As a skipper, you need to be absolutely certain that you're still going to be comfortably afloat when the water is at its lowest point. If you've been doing a sailing course, you'll be taught how to calculate tide properly and accurately. But in practice, when on the water, I use a quick and dirty method that builds in a decent margin of error. You should always know what the tide is doing before you set off. Check the local tide times and establish your high water time. Let's do a little example. We'll use Portsmouth as our standard port and high water today is 7.14. We arrive at the anchorage at high water and drop our anchor. But as the tide is now on its way out, the water level is going to drop. So how do we calculate if we'll have enough water to stay afloat at low water? The first thing is to look at the chart and read off the depth where we are. In this case, it says 2.4 metres, but that's at the lowest possible tide or lowest astronomical tide. At the next low water, the height is 1.6 metres. To get the height of low water where we are, we add that 1.6 onto the lowest astronomical tide depth, which we get from the chart. Our training courses tell us we can call off the tide heights from the tide curve graphs, or we can interpolate between the two and apply the rule of twelfths. But in reality, that's a lot of maths you need to do before you arrive. And what if your ideal charted spot is already taken when you get there? Of course, if you drop first and then do the maths, you might have to haul it all up again. But there is a much simpler, cruder way, which I use in practice. Before I get to the anchorage, I need to know the tidal range. To get that, we take the height of the tide at high water, which was 4.4, and subtract the amount of water predicted for low water. In this case, it's 4.4 less than 1.6 for low water. So the range is 2.8 metres. Add on the draft of your boat, in this case, let's say it's one metre, which gives you 3.8 metres, and then write that number down before you arrive at your chosen anchorage. When you get there, you can move around looking at the depth sounder, and when you find your spot, as long as the depth sounder's reading higher than your number, you'll be safe. So if you rock up and the depth sounder gives you 4.2 metres, you'll know you'll have at least 0.4 under the keel at low water. Of course, if you arrive any time before low water, in practice, it'll be more than that. Obviously, once you're settled, you can do the proper tide calculation to reflect your actual time of arrival and your actual position. Then you can factor in any secondary port calculations, and once the math's done, you can go up on deck and adjust the scope of your anchor chain to suit. But having that range number to hand whilst you're sweeping around the anchorage, watching the depth sounder, is perfect for deciding if you should move to deeper water before dropping the hook. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.